Hi, and welcome to London Bridge Bricks. In this official LEGO magazine review, we'll be taking a look inside the latest issues of Hidden Side and a very highly flammable LEGO Ninjago. Okay, so let's cry kick off then this review with Legos Ninjago's official magazine. Okay, so this is issue number 59 and it retails here in the UK for a smidgen under £4 at £3.99. And around here, we get ourselves looking at the front cover with, we've got ourselves a, a digi version of Jay and a digi version of the uh, Green Ninja himself, Lloyd. And of course, um, what I'm liking about these digi effects that they've got on their, uh, on their outfits is their, um, their motives. I think that looks really good, but I'm really liking the effect on the eyes. I think that looks really cool. I think it looks very menacing. Uh, I think it's, a really nice effect and it carries over really well into kind of the, the comic world and uh, I, I can only imagine it would look absolutely great uh, when I get to see the cartoons eventually. So going down a little bit we get ourselves a preview of the two posters as well that come with this magazine. So first of all we've got ourselves the, the whole team, the whole Ninja Argo team themselves uh, all sporting their Digi outfits and of course you've got Zane there in the, the white and the silver. I think he looks particularly good especially with the electric blue eyes as well. Then over here, we've got the, the fiery elemental uh, ninja himself, Kai. I think it looks really good. I think this is um, a much more traditional looking Kai. And I think the colours and everything and the way it looks, it looks brilliant. And we'll, anyway, we'll take a further look at that in just a moment. Then over here, we've got a preview window of our uh, coming comic magazine. That's that. And then just up here, we've got the actual buildable figure himself, the fiery elemental Kai. Uh, looking great actually, I think that's a really nice version of him. So anyway, let's flip him up, let's take a look underneath. So we've got some more details of him, this forbidden spinjitsu, I've uh, got his hair on fire. It's a really nice version of him, it looks like he's got some really good prints and of course we'll take a, uh, a much closer look at that a little bit later on as well. Uh, and it looks like we've got a couple of uh, alternative faces as well. And then just down here, we get ourselves our first look, or at least my first look anyway, at their kind of digital versions of those um, ninjas. So over here, we've got the, the, the kind of their, their new outfits uh, for the season, but these are actually avatars of, of our heroes. So we've got Naya here, we've got Jay here, who's looks like a, a, a kind of guitarist from a, a rock band, but we'll, again, we'll take a little deeper look at that a little bit later. And of course, we've got Cole here uh, sporting a very hipster looking uh, moustache. So enough of the front cover. Let's take a little deeper look inside the magazine. So page two, we get a preview of the new season of Ninjago with the, well, I kind of, best way to put it really is a very digital gaming vibe. Uh, over here, of course, we've got our ninjas that we're just talking about wearing all their outfits and, uh, oh, there's a bit of an arcade machine there. Hmm. Hold that thought there actually, because that looks like Kai's. Uh, down here, of course, we've got, we've got the villains. Now, I think the rats, personally, I think they look like a cross between a goat and Cyclops from X-Men, but you tell me what you think in the comments below. Either way, they are rats, so we kind of go with that. And uh, I've got to say, they do look really good. I think their hair pieces look pretty smart as well. Uh, over here, we've got this guy here called Unigami. Uh, I've got no idea about that, but he looks pretty powerful anyway, judging by the size of his face. Uh, and then over here, we've got the main villains, the kind of almost um, policing villains uh, of the new season of Ninjago with the red visors. And keep a look out as well for that symbol there. I think that's gonna become uh, a bit of a thing. Okay, so over here, page three, and we get ourselves a picture of the mechanic with his cybernetic bionic eye and a very English looking bowl hat. Then over here, of course, as per normal, we get the index, but this one looking like a, a menu from an 80s computer game, telling us where all the puzzles, comic facts, and quizzes are. So enough of that. Let's take a little deeper look. Okay, so page four, and we get the lowdown on our beautiful minifigure. And this, of course, uh, picture down here shows the alternative faces that we get with Kai as well. We get the standard looking Kai with his scar across his right eye. And of course, we get this maximum power looking one as well. I think that looks pretty good, actually. It's a nice effect, very fiery. The whole, the whole figure in this one looks like a, like a, a, like he's a burning inferno by himself. So I think I'm really looking forward to actually building that one. 
Over to page five, and it's our first puzzle with the magazine, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a rope puzzle. So burn the right ropes and, uh, and capture the baddies. Page six, and it's a spot the difference puzzle. Yeah, there's one there. It's got eyes in that one, it hasn't got eyes in that one. So page seven, what have we got over here? Well, it's quite a smart looking labyrinth game. Page eight, there's another puzzle, and this time matching up pictures correctly. So you've got to pop those pictures over there on the right sides and just match it all up. It's quite a fun little gun to do. Okay, so page nine, we get ourselves a maze puzzle. Ah, and then page 10, finally, we get to the comic. And the comic is the best part for me about all these magazines. I, I don't necessarily always like the stories. The stories are fun, they're cool, and you kind of learn a little bit of background about the characters and uh, what's canon with them and stuff like that, if there is such a thing. Um, but this one, uh, I do particularly like, and I think the artwork. The artwork I can always appreciate as well, because I'm quite into my artwork as well. So, this particular story uh, of this uh, this comic strip is brought to us by someone by the name of Jan Dinta, and the illustrations are brought to us by Natasha Roma and a Maria Latusa. Uh, so I do hope I pronounced those correctly. Apologies if I haven't. Um, and the story starts, of course, with our villain, uh, the mechanic. And he's gathering his henchmen here. I uh, know he's got the arcade pods and stuff like that here as well. So there's a bit of a bit of a theme going through this magazine. Okay, the pages and the comic continues. Okay, page 14, and got the mechanic here in his, his kind of zooped up van, and it looks like he's got some uh, tricks up his sleeves as well, because he's got Zane here uh, flying his helicopter um, and getting outwitted by, a, well, a giant spoon by the looks of it. And then over here on page 15, and um, we get to meet this character here. So this is Milton Dyer. Now he's the programmer uh, behind the game Prime Empire, uh, which is gonna be a bit of a thing for the new wave of the season of Ninjago. So keep, uh, keep your eyes peeled for him, because I think he's gonna feature quite heavily. And there's Jay there talking about uh, one of his old computer games that he used to play that was programmed by that particular minifigure himself. Okay, so over the page, in page 16, and we get ourselves some more puzzles. And then over here, so 17, 18, 19, and 20, and we get to see our posters. So this is the, 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 the team in their digi outfits. And of course, we've got a very sort of flaming Kai here. I'm really liking this, it looks really good. It's a good mixture of colors and reds and yellows and stuff like that. I think it looks really good. And he's looking like he's very much in the fiery zone. It's a cool little poster, and it's definitely one that I'll be putting on the wall for when I've got my uh, live streams. And there's Zane there, good close up of Zane. Let us know in the comments below what, uh, what, what poster you like and what do you think of their new digital outfits. Okay, so page 21, um, we get to see our ninja sport in their new gaming hilts. Uh, so you've got here these, got like these gaming pads there. They look like PlayStation game pads, but of course they've then attached them weapons and stuff like that. And I think it's really good. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting hold of a couple of them as well and seeing what they're kind of like uh, in, the, in the flesh. So page 22, and we are back to the comic. And it looks like Naya's taking control of the situation. And the comic is just split over a couple of sections in this particular magazine. Again, the artwork though, looks really, really good. I'm liking this artwork here on him. I think that character <laughs> looks pretty cool. Not suspicious at all, is it? And then page 27, uh, and we get a little more, some more revelations as the story's unfolding a little bit more. And it feels like a, this whole comic strip feels like a bit of a prequel to the new season of Ninjago as well. And you can see this mysterious character here saying, good, now it's time for your mission to Dyer Island. And, uh, and over here, we got ourselves some old, very 80s looking uh, arcade machines. So there you go, There's all the clues are kind of there, what's gonna be unfolding in the stories in the future. Okay, so page 28, and we get to see our rock star avatar versions of, uh, of Jay over there. And we get to see the avatar version of Lloyd and the avatar version, of course, of Kai. So 
these are these are really cool little sets that Lego are doing at the moment. Um, I like everything about them. Just one one tiny tiny thing I don't like about them is the packaging. The packaging for them is like quite big. When in reality, the the actual sets themselves are actually quite small. But anyway, that side is a, is a, is a minor thing. Um, what's great about these? These retail here in the UK for roughly nine pounds, and you get two minifigures with them as well. And you get this arcade machine as well. Uh, and of course you get this assortment here of accessories and of course you get my favorite part the actual gaming hill itself so you get the digi versions of the uh, of the figures and of course you get the the uh, avatar versions as well and i'm really liking that every the, all the ninjas the arcade pods come in their various colors as well and i'm, I'm liking the stickers now it does come with stickers as well there's a few, there are a few stickers and they're, but they're quite big and i'm guessing that they're fairly easy to apply because of that Interestingly though, and I don't know if this is a thing uh, for the new season, is that you, on Lloyd's, you've got like a different finish there. So instead of cheese slopes here, um, you get this more spiky element just there. So I wonder if that is a factor in the new season as well. But I suppose as time goes on, uh, we'll find out a little bit more ourselves. Okay, so over the page. Oh yeah, and then this set. I think looks fantastic. So this is a, another new Ninjago set. Uh, it's the Gamers Market, it's set number 71708, and it retails here in the UK for £30 and comes with nine minifigures. And I'm liking this pink Zane down here. Now, that's what actually comes from season one. If you happen to follow the cartoon, you'll know that this comes from season one. And it's, uh, and it's the first time that we've actually ever had a pink Zane. And then you've got this figure over here. It was very cool and looks very much like Kill Bill. Uh, so Rumit, he was back, and it's probably one of my favourite figures from this particular set. But that said, you've also got this figure here. Now he shows up twice here. Uh, his name's Akino, uh, and as you can see, this one particular figure who comes with a couple of different weapons has a couple of different facial expressions as well. So that's pretty cool. And then over here, uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier from the front cover, you've got Cole there sporting his very hipster-looking moustache, and he's barely recognizable really. Uh, I don't even think he's old enough to even grow a moustache like that, but good on him anyway, uh, and it looks really cool. Um, a character I do wanna talk about is this character here, who I think looks like a bit of a hidden side reject. And his name is Scott, and I've got no idea what he's about at all. Um, but anyway, I guess as, as, as we read more comics, uh, as we watch more cartoons, uh, details of what he's all about will um will unfold but he's definitely something to do with the, the kind of the more digital world okay so over the page page 32 and we're getting near to the end of the comic now on the magazine in general um we get ourselves some q and a's uh, on the actual comic itself so you ask some questions you know have you read it all properly and stuff like that and just go back and just make sure you know the story particularly well so that's quite that's kind of fun fun thing to do uh then over here this i think this is really really good and we get to see some fan pictures and photographs so i think they're particularly uh, really cool. I like to see the builds and I always like to see people doing their builds and, uh, and the way people draw their figures as well. And these ones here look like a, a cross between Power Rangers and Ninjas themselves. So yeah, I think it's really good. It's a really fun page to see and it's nice to see how, how people visualise things uh, through, through, uh, through the ages. Okay, so page 34 and uh, we find out a little bit more about what we're going to keep getting next month. And of course we'll buy the magazine and review it here on London Bridge Bricks. Um, we get ourselves a, a, a funky looking Lloyd, the Epic Ninja Toy Lloyd. He looks looking really good. Again, um, one head, two faces, so he comes with an alternative face, which is good. And, uh, and this particular new version of the magazine comes out later on in March. Okay, so over here, and we get ourselves a, a big cutout of Jay looking in his Digi outfit, and there you go, it's a brilliant picture there showing his kind of gaming pad hilt and of course the weapon uh, that he's got connected to it. I think that's pretty good. And it says down here, you've got Cole here, who's, that's his avatar version of Cole, saying, level up with me on the other side. So I guess if, if we turn over, and there he is there, the Digi version of, uh, of Lloyd himself. Looking really good. Again, sporting the, the gaming hilt. Interesting choice of weapon as well. I think it looks really good. And it says CJ Rock, on the other side as well, and of course, that P and J. Confirmation of that. Um, Digi power activated for your for your room. Yeah, it's pretty cool actually. I, I like it. Okay, so that's our that's our overview of the magazine. I guess it's uh, now it's time to get Kai free 
from his fireproof fall bag. So here we have a extremely fired up looking Kai. So he's got this fire shredding effect going across his torso. And I think that looks really good, especially when you just, just catch the light there. I think it looks particularly cool. The only letdown for me though, at the front of his printing, he comes down to looking at his belt and just going down his hips. The, the black against the red, to me the black just doesn't look quite opaque enough. Looking at his arms and you, you've got these cool looking golden arms and I think they match really particularly well with like the sort of facial mask section uh, that he's wearing there. And of course, looking at it from the side, you get this great looking fiery hair effects using kind of like a trans orange uh, section. I think that looks really good. I think it looks really powerful as well. Turning around and you've got the continuation of the shredded effect on the back there. I think that looks really good. I think that's a nice match there. And you've got those fiery elements as well that he's holding. Quite similar to those ones that Captain Marvel uses as well in the Marvel Universe. So let's bring him back round then. And let's take a look at those faces of his. Okay, so this is his powered up face and he he's got, looks really powerful and he's kind of oozing lots of firepower, so to speak. And let's turn him around and take a look at that old face. Okay, so that's a little bit more sort of standard looking really, kind of a little bit more accomplished, a bit more relaxed, I guess you could say. Let's turn him back round again. And then put that mask on him. I think he's a really nice figure. He's, if it just wasn't for that black and not being opaque enough around the, the hips and torso, I think it would be almost perfect. Our next magazine, and it is of course, The Hidden Side. So this is a relatively new magazine still here in the UK, uh, being issue number five. And just like Ninjago, it's £3.99. So round on the front cover here, we've got a very skeletal looking Alfrego sporting his crash helmet, which of course is essential wear for all skeletons out there. Behind him, you've got Jack with his new Lego elements with his hairpiece and his hat. And down here, you've got a preview of the comic and a preview as well of the two posters that come in the magazine, Team Evil. And if I just flip the figure up, this one's called Team Ghost Hunter. So back to the figure. And we got ourselves a, a ghostly looking biker, uh, sporting a couple of decent looking elements actually. Another crash helmet there, just like his. And of course, uh, we get the ghostly looking crowbar. And of course, we get the hidden, hidden side elements as well. So flipping them up, we've got a few more details there. It looks like we come comes with a couple of different heads. And then the featured set of the magazine is JB's Lab. Okay, so taking a look inside the magazine, We'll start off with page three. And of course, this is the contents and index page. Um, looks like the comic starts on page six. Page 14 shows you JB's lab. And like I said, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. And then down here, um, looks like we've got something crafty going on with a uh, send a haunted message. Like I say, we'll work through the magazine and we'll get to that one in just a tick. Okay, page four. And it's the biker's ghost profile. So strengths of the, of the biker is, a, is a, got a dangerous crowbar and truly gruesome. Uh, and the weakness uh, being for this particular ghost is a, is a gas station hot dogs. Now, for anyone who's been to a gas station and tried their hot dogs, I'd probably say it was a weakness for most people, not just a, a hidden side ghost. Over here on page five, and we get ourselves our first puzzle to locate things like uh, other bikers and uh, a ringing phone and stuff like that. So it's a kind of a nice easy puzzle uh, to kind of ease into the magazine with. And in page six, we, we get our comic strip kicking off. Okay, so this one, again, just like the uh, Ninjago set, is um, authored by Jan Dinter. The penciling's done by Marco McCagney and the colorings by Serge Laporte and uh, a person by the name of Robot, whoever they may be. But anyway, this is great looking artwork. I really like it. Again. Like I said about Ninjago, is the stories are not always my particular type of stories, but I can appreciate the artwork and the inking in Hidden Side is always particularly good. And over here, we've got a, a ghost and we've got some uh, bikers over here. Um, and this particular villain here, 
uh, is a person by the name of Lady E, and she's one of the main villains uh, with the hidden side thing. Then over here, we've got Jack Zane. Uh, so please, if you like these videos, leave a comment and subscribe. And you know what? If you do like these videos from London Bridge Bricks, uh, give us a thumbs up. And, uh, and if you're new to the family, why don't you hop on and subscribe to us as well? Okay, so working through it now. And we can see all this gloomy here. And this is what transforms uh, the bikers uh, into, uh, into their possessed ghosty kind of formations. And over here, we've got these um, hairs, hairs of havoc. So that's the logo there for all the bikers in the hidden side, which is kind of cool. Page nine, and it's another puzzle. And this time it's to spot the difference. Now you see, no, you don't. <laughs> okay, so page 10, and it's back in the thick of the comic again. Page 12, and our heroes, by the looks of it, are being chased by the bikers. That's a nice bit of artwork there. Really like this image here, it's very clever. Nice use of different angles and stuff like that, and you kind of get the uh, the, the the awareness of it. Everyone's going as quick as they can, and you know it adds to adds to the tension. It's it's good artwork. I really like it. So where are we at here? Page thirteen. I'm lucky for some, and it's El Frego chasing down one of the bikers. So there's the biker. There's El Frego, and he's got to work his way through that and capture them somehow. Okay, so. Uh, as promised, page 14 and 15, and it's the Hidden Side feature set. So this is a uh, Lego set number 70418, and it's Hidden Side's JB's Ghost Lab set. And it retails here in the UK for £16.99. And it features quite a few decent looking minifigures. We've got, uh, we've got kind of got Douglas Elton here. Uh, this is in this is El Frego's kind of alternative uh, version, uh, being Douglas Elton. And over here you've got JB, uh, you've got these great looking Teslas over here. They look fantastic. And you've got like a the older version of, of Jack here. So if you look at his, his hat and his kind of uh, his hoodie, he's got there, that's the old one. And this is this being the new one here. Both of them though, look really, really good. You've got JB there with a really cool headpiece and uh, wearing those goggles. And then just down here, um, it gives you the lowdown on how to use the Hidden Side app. So you download the app, you build the set and uh, and then you fire up the, the program and using your smartphone, uh, you can catch all those ghosts. Let us know in the comments below actually if uh, if you've used the Hidden Side app and uh, what's your experience been on it. Now we actually built this set a long, long time ago. It was one just before the Hidden Side uh, sets officially came out. And uh, I've got to say, it's, it's a really great set. It's very, very colorful. This here kind of turns around. You've got the arrow there telling you that. It comes with 173 pieces. It's a really nice set. You've got these um, stickers there that go on there and they, they work really, really well. And like I say, the testers look great. And you've got this 3D printer here and that's, that's really cool. And you kind of put a couple of Lego elements in there as well and that, that door opens out. It's a really nice set. And uh, if you can get hold of it still, uh, I definitely recommend it. For the money, it's really, really good value. Okay, so page 17, or page 16, I should say, and we've got ourselves a Ghost Hunter's Diploma. Okay, so what you've got to do then, uh, you've got to answer these questions and just see what, the, the, what sort of profile you have of being a particular type of Ghost Hunter. 17 over here, uh, and we've got ourselves a uh, preview, or this, that's kind of the page, page previews of our actual posters, which open right out. So this is uh, this is the back the back of it. This is the main uh, one of the main posters, and it's the only one where you actually get to see it because in in the centre of it you've got uh, Captain Jonas here, uh, and you've got I think his name's uh, Mr. Clark if I, if uh, memory serves me correct. Uh, he's pretty cool looking, and then over this side you've got the other side of the poster. Can't really catch them out too well there, but either way they're really good posters, and certainly when I'm when I'm streaming next. Uh, I always like to stick them up on the side here so when the camera's kind of looking down uh, you can see some of the posters there. They're really colourful and it's just nice to kind of interchange them around a little bit. They're really cool. 
Okay, it's page 21, and we get ourselves a, a kind of a, a spaghetti looking puzzle, I guess you could call it, uh, with an out of breath Jack uh, looking to catch some more ghosts if he can. Okay, page 22 and 23, and it's a game, and all you need is a, a dice by the looks of it and a couple of minifigures and just a couple of people to play it. Um, watch out for these crocodile signs and these also kind of symbolic of things that you can't do. So what happens if I get hit an anchor? So if you hit an anchor, uh, hit a fishing boat, and uh, it's blocking your path, move back one spot. So it's kind of like kind of snakes and ladders meets uh, hidden side. Okay, page 24, yeah, and we're back in the thick of the action again, and it's Jack taking a ride on uh, some jet skis. Oh, I'm liking that, looking dead ahead. Uh, you get the uh, ominous uh, Grimsworth uh, Cove as well, which is a, a really cool little set uh, from the Hidden Side theme. So look out for that one as well. Page 28. And the comic continues, and we've got some really nice artwork going on here. Again, this, this kind of electronic neon green. It looks really, really good. And there's that Hairs of Havoc. Again, the, uh, the icon for it. it looks really cool. I'm liking that. It's a really good little logo and symbol sort of thing to have. And this is them trying to, trying to be depossessed uh, by Parker over here. And it looks like a happy ending. So we get a, a, a wolf from Spencer, and of course, being hidden aside, we get ourselves a, 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 an almost Disney happy ending as well. And everyone wondering how they got to where they got to, having been possessed. Page 30 and 31, oh, we've got ourselves, this is a huge puzzle, this one. This is called the, uh, the, the Tower of Terror puzzle. And you've got to work out all the different puzzles along here to get to the top. So the idea is you get to the top, and you fire up the uh, the lighthouse itself and, and you've kind of won the game. Um, but you've got to work out all these different puzzles on the way up. Page 2 if there's one thing that JB loves, it's coffee more than anything. Hold on to that. <laughs> and so this is her attempt, by the looks of it, uh, via a puzzle anyway, of becoming a barista of her own. So what we got on page 33, it looks like we just got our, our kind of our last few puzzles because we're getting to the, the back end of the magazine now. Okay, so page 34, and we get to see all the answers to all the, the different puzzles and questions we have throughout the magazine. And we get details of what's coming up uh, later on in March. Uh, and it looks like, by the looks of it, we're gonna be getting ourselves a, a build minifigure version of JB as well. So that's definitely worth looking out for. And definitely one that we'll be reviewing here again on London Bridge Bricks. Page 35, and we get ourselves the ominous postcards. So you cut these out uh, and send them to whomever you're gonna send them to, I guess. Uh, let's have a look over here and what's on the outside. Oh, we get ourselves some decent looking artwork actually. This is really nice. So wishing you the worst. Uh, <laughs> instead of taking care, you take cover. And then over here, you've got Keep Cool and Ghost Hunters Greetings. Yeah, looks really, really good. So that's our overview of the Hidden Side magazine. I guess it's now time to pull out this biker from that foil bag. So this is our biker then, and this is her in a kind of pre-possessed mode. So we've got a very stereotypical print here of a biker with the chains, the zips, the necklace, with the hairs of havoc pendant on it. I think that looks really nice. And she's wearing a very Italian open face helmet, and as you can see, she's smiling a bit of a smirky smile about her. Now the torso that she's wearing is a kind of like a light bluish gray, and it's a denim sleeveless jacket. But the only problem is with her torso, the her torso is kind of white, but her arms are meant to match, but her arms look much whiter than the torso. So there's that opacity problem again coming through, and I guess that's the, the original color of the torso and kind of painting on a, a white on top of that. And that kind of why it looks a little bit grayer than the actual arms itself, which look almost brilliant white in comparison. So her legs are gray with chains outlining her pockets as well, kind of finishing off that very biker look. There's a good side shot view of her uh, claw bar as well. So back round to the back of the torso, and you can see that she's uh, 
got that hairs of havoc motive on the back of her torso. I think that looks really nice. It's a, it's a really nice finish. I really like the logo as well, or the hairs of havoc. I think that's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of fun and quite trendy as well. Yeah, I think she looks good. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at a gloomed up version of this biker. So this is her having been transformed into a, a monster biker. And as you can see, the, the facial expression is really good. I, I think Hidden Cider always seems to hit the nail on the head when it comes to designing the, the spooky faces on these. I really like the hair element as well. It's kind of long, wild and banshee-like. Let's give it a quick turn around and show you a little bit more of the detail here around the back of the hair and down the sides as well. It's a really good windswept kind of looking element. I think she overall she's a really good looking figure and I think mm, between the two magazines I think she just about edges over Kai because I think Kai suffered a little bit with the opacity problem with the black against the, the red background on his hips and uh, on his legs as well but even though this kind of does have some problems with the arms and the, and the torso the whiteness and everything like that I just think overall the printing and everything like that I think she just just about edges it. So that was our look at the two most recent official LEGO magazines from Hidden Side and Ninjago. We hope you enjoyed this quick look inside what they have to offer in terms of content and builds. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts and feelings are on these magazines. Do you like the games, puzzles and craft elements? And do you like the builds? And do the free figures spark your interest? And are you enjoying the coverage of these monthly magazines? Don't forget, for up-to-date news on what we're up to, please do follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And if you like this video and you like what we're doing around here, why not hop on and subscribe and become part of the LBB family. Thank you as always for tuning in and we'll leave you now with a couple of videos that we think you might like.